So learning objectives as far as from this module. And you know what, you, what I think you might do is after we cover a module to kind of go back to these learning objectives and say, yep, 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 oh, I don't feel so good about organizational priorities. And you know, kind of use that as a checklist for areas you think you want to go back and examine a little bit further. So our objectives we've already kind of talked about. And as far as testability, this is about a quarter of the exam, 24%, almost a quarter of the exam is going to come from this one topic. Okay, our task statements, and again, I, I don't feel ob obliged to read bullet points to you all. I would encourage that you go back through with the various task statements and feel like after we're completed, after we've completed this chapter, I would hope that you would be comfortable with performing any of these tasks and then also like I said if there are areas that you don't feel strong on feel free to reach out to me or go out and Google so you don't feel confident in developing a business case go out and Google business case download some templates and take a look at them and do a little bit of extra work so again um, I don't feel like this test is the only thing you'll ever need to prepare you for the exam but on the flip side, I don't think you have to go out and spend a lot more money either. I think this is a good structure and framework. Use this information to tell you what your weak and strong areas are that you do need to dig a little bit more. All right, same idea with the knowledge statements. Um, you know, what is a security strategy and how we're going to develop one? What is security governance framework? What are strategic plans and business cases and all those pieces. Again, I'll let you go through those on your own. All right, let's get started. Always on the first day, I feel like there's a lot of ramping up, a lot of preliminary information, so I'm always just anxious to get right into the material. All right, our very first section, the priorities for the CISM candidate. So the idea is when you walk into an organization and you've got CISM on your resume and you've gotten uh, hired based on that for a position, a position fit for a CISM, so to speak, what are you going to do? Well, Certified in Information Security Management. So first of all, we've got to have a pretty good understanding of what that even means. What is information security? What is information security management? You know, the idea is we could answer that question in a whole lot of different ways. But how we answer it should have some certain themes in line, right? Every one of us can define information security differently. But we should all ultimately come back to protecting informational assets and providing the CIA triad, the CIA triangle, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So confidentiality means we're going to prevent unauthorized disclosure of information prevent unauthorized disclosure of information. You could hear it called privacy, you could hear it called secrecy, but preventing unauthorized disclosure. Now integrity means we want assurance that there's been no modification. I want to know that what I'm downloading hasn't been corrupted, but I also want to know it hasn't been maliciously modified. My audit files, I want to be able to know no attacker's gone back in and changed my audit logs. Right? I want integrity. I want an assurance against modification. And then availability, I want timely access to resources. Right? Timely access to resources. The appropriate people have access to the resources when they need them. So any definition of information security should certainly reference the CIA triad. But there's a lot more than just the CIA triad as well. So um, we want to think about things. If you take a look at the little green standout triangle there, yeah, confidentiality, availability, authentication. Authentication is a term we're going to have to talk about a lot. And authentication means that we want to verify the origin maybe of a message. Um, I want an assurance that the file I'm downloading comes from the entity I think it's coming from, or this email truly is coming from Kelly H instead of just somebody who's spoofing. So for authentication, we want to prove an identity. 
We want to verify the origin. Okay. Um, access control. You know, so we've got confidentiality, availability, authentication, integrity. Access control, we can think of that as regulating how a subject can access an object. We're going to regulate how a subject can access an object, or you can say manipulate an object. And, um, you know, Kelly is a subject, can access a file, that files the object. But subjects really are any active entity, so it doesn't just have to be a user. You know, processes can be active. Objects are passive, so computers can be passive, files can be passive, shares can be passive. You know, so basically we're just going to talk about governing subject object access for access control, and we'll go into much more depth there. All right, then we have non-repudiation, and non-repudiation is a combination of integrity and authenticity. Non-repudiation is a combination of integrity and authenticity. And what it means is that a sender can't dispute having sent a message, nor the contents of the message. So if I can't dispute having sent the message, that's authenticity. It definitely came from me. And if I can't dispute the contents, that's the integrity piece. So non-repudiation, a sender can't dispute having sent a message, nor the contents of the message. Now that's just in relation to email and non-repudiation can be expanded beyond that definitely but that'll kind of be our focus. All right and then we see compliance and that simply means that we maintain compliance with uh, legal and ethical requirements right? and that's an important part of um, information security. Sorry. All right so as part of our information security program, we have to make sure that there's accountability, that we're able to match actions to individuals. We want to make sure there's oversight through senior management and through governance oversight. Governance also has to be involved in prioritizing our informational assets. Not all things are created equal. And we don't have unlimited time. We don't have unlimited funds. So we need senior management to help us prioritize and determine where we put those resources first, where our focus goes. All right, risk management. Every decision we make should be firmly rooted in risk management. Risk management is the basis for all decisions. And really, information security should just be risk management, right? And risk management, and we'll get into much more depth. You don't have to feel like you have to take notes and keep up with this. But basically, what risk management does is it says, let's look at our assets, what we're protecting and what, we're wor what they're worth. That's the most important piece that we start with, okay? What am I protecting? What's it worth? Then, once I know what my assets are, I look at the threats and vulnerabilities, okay? When I look at the threats and vulnerabilities of an asset, that's what gives me my risk, right? Where the threat times vulnerability equals risk. Then I want to figure out what's the potential for that risk event to happen and what's the impact if it does probability and impact. Okay? That gives me a risk value. Ideally, we get that value as a dollar amount. Right? I've got an 80% chance of losing $10,000. That's an $8,000 risk. Because when I get that dollar value, now I can figure out what type of protection to implement based on the potential for loss. I'm not going to spend $50 to protect a $20 bill, right? So ultimately, we want to make our decisions on risk management because risk management is going to help us spend the right amount of attention, time, money on those risks for which we have the least tolerance and that have the highest uh, probability and impact. And ultimately, our good information security program should be founded on the necessity of maintaining regulatory compliance within our organization to applicable laws and regulations.